continuing our examination of ways in which great songwriters have used chord inversions, that is, chords with the third or fifth in the bass, to craft the chord progressions behind some of their most beloved enduring melodies, I'd now like to look at some ways in which great songwriters have used second inversion major chords, that is, a major chord with the fifth in the bass. But first, let's look at some traditional uses of this device. Classical composers such as Bach, Beethoven, and Mozart commonly employed a second inversion major or minor chord to set up a final cadence at the end of a section of a piece. And this move has been used so much that it has become a musical cliche, kind of like one of those stock turnaround licks that guitarists typically play during the last two bars of a 12 bar blues progression, you know. <laughs> That's not what I'm talking about here. Okay, we have, say, in the key of A major, we're gonna go up into one chord, A, and then four chord, D, and then we have A over E, and then that, so the fifth E is in the bass, and then it goes to the five chord, E, and that's the common tone, and then you can go E7, that resolves to A again, so it's, It's a common thing in classical music. They set up the end of a section that way. And then the minor version, the parallel minor version of that would be A minor, D minor, that's your minor four chord, and now A minor over E. Kind of sounds dramatic. And then E again, E major again. Again, that's... And here's another example of the use of a second inversion chord. In this case, we're going to stay using the key of A again. We're going to stay on an A major chord. I'll play it with the open A string. It's A. And then we're going to play the four chord D, but keep the A bass note. So it's D over A. So you have that common tone in the bass, also known as a pedal tone. Then the parallel minor version of that would be A minor, D minor for A, A minor. Very somber, sad sounding, right? And you could also mix it up. You could do A major, and then D minor over A. So there's your second inversion minor chord, and then back to A major. And typically you'll hear, like in classical music, you hear, eighth notes, just like in metal, right? Here's another standard classical move in which a second inversion chord is used to create a walk-up in the bass line, like this. So we're going to use the key of A major again. We have A, and then E over B, and then A over C sharp. D, this is your four chord, and then we're going to walk back down, A over C sharp. A nice warmth to it, right? E over B, and on A5. So you have this kind of bass movement. Walks up the first four notes of the major scale. And with the chords, you can pick it, like finger pick it. Sounds like one of those church hymns, right? Common practice harmony. And then the parallel minor version of that would be A minor, and then E over B, A minor over C, and D minor, this is a little bit of a stretch. We got fifth fret, third fret, second, third. Back to A minor over C, E over B, A minor. Now compare that to the sound of, if you were just do everything in root position, so if I went A minor, E major, A minor, D minor, E minor, E, A. So you have. Compare that, that's very angular sounding as opposed to. It's more melodic, the bass sounds.
So the use of inversions is one of the richest resources in common practice harmony in classical music. So those are examples of some of the conventional ways that second inversion chords and first inversion chords have been used for hundreds of years in classical music. I'd now like to look at some novel ways that songwriters, contemporary songwriters, have used these chord inversions in pop and rock music of the later 20th century. The first example is from the beautiful Elton John song, Someone Save My Life Tonight, which uses basic G and C chords, but to play in the original key to song, you have to capo at the first fret. So it's really a half step higher. It's A flat and D flat, but it kind of goes like this. So we have, this is a G chord. I'm thinking G, even though I know it's A flat because it's a capo, but I'm thinking G. But then we have D is our lowest note. We're not playing, we're not fingering the full G chord, just playing this. That's G over D, second inversion. And then we have this kind of bass melody. That sounds nice. It has an up in the air kind of sound. That's the thing with second inversion chords when the fifth is in the bass. It has a certain warmth to it and it, this kind of up in the air sound. It, to me, it just gets my attention every time I hear it. It's like it gives me goosebumps. It's a beautiful sound. And then we go to the four chords, C. Interesting, you notice we're playing an F here, but we were playing an F sharp earlier. It's got like a sus4 on the C. Beautiful. Another great example is the chorus to The Night They Drove Old Dixie Down by the band. And it has one of those goosebump inducing moments where the uh, second inversion chord is used with the fifth and the bass, kind of like this. So here are the basic changes leading up to that section. C. D minor, D. That's where it goes. The night they drove old Dixie down. Right there. To me, that sounds so grand, you know, having to see with the G bass note. If they had just played a regular C chord, Sit down. That would still sound great, right? But the night, right? They drove on Dixie down. Beautiful. Another great classic example of the use of a second inversion chord in a rock song is the George Harrison Beatles classic Something. The basic chord progression we have F. And then E flat, and then G over D, resolving to C. So again, it's chord melody style. And you can play it like this, or take advantage of the open string. And then going into the song's bridge, he does something very clever. He resolves to A major instead of C major on that last chord, and that would be like this. and that modulates, sets up the modulation beautifully. One final example I'd like to cite is from the uh, beautiful Jimi Hendrix song, Angel. And it's going into the chorus and Jimi plays these chords, B, D, F sharp, but bassist Billy Cox plays the fifth, C sharp. And there's your second inversion right there. So you could just play that on the guitar by just playing that and not playing a low F sharp root. So it would be like. And it goes to G sharp minor, A sharp minor, B. I think Jimmy does a thing where he thumbs it. There's a little sus four thing. And then the chorus is an E. So leading up to that again, it's. A 
that's a pretty second inversion major chord. G sharp minor, A sharp minor, B. Sweet. <laughs> 